G'day guys, hope you're all doing well. Basically what we're doing here is gathering all the new and returning writer questions that have been piling up. So let's dive into all the questions the new and returning writers have and see if we can help you out. What are the advantages of a heavier bike and what type of adventure suits them? There must be something, right? Keep up the great work, Solid. Thanks for everything. It's a great question, Rod. I'll break it up into two answers because it was kind of two questions there. As to the heavier weight, are there any advantages? The answer is yes, there is. The heavier weight means a much more stable bike, particularly out on the open road where you're experiencing crosswinds. If you're doing a big adventure, sometimes bad weather, overtaking big trucks. So that heavier weight means less buffeting, less getting bashed around by the elements and just gives you a more stable ride. So that weight can be an advantage in certain situations. It's not always a disadvantage. And what types of adventures suit them? Well, this one needs to be prefaced with what kind of rider you are. So if you're just a regular rider, your off-road skills aren't particularly crash hot, then I think the adventure bike is more suited for adventure touring. Easy dirt roads, a lot of tarmac riding, a lot of high speed riding, maybe you've got a pillion and your luggage on the back, and maybe a little bit of difficult stuff mixed in here and there, but nothing too crazy. The other place for adventure bikes is for riders that are intermediate and above, and they can really handle themselves on a bike. They don't have to worry about the weight so much because they can compensate with it with their skills. If you're doing a really big adventure ride, say you're going to the the Simpson Desert in Australia, thousands of kilometers. And a lot of that to get to the Simpson Desert is just highway, high speeds, just grinding out thousands of kilometers. An adventure bike is gonna be far more comfortable than the bike behind me. Now, I would take the bike behind me because I know when I get to the Simpson Desert, my skills are not that great. So I need all the help I can get. But the guy who's got the skills can take the adventure bike because that means they can conserve energy on the way there. They're more comfortable than I am on my skinny little dual sport. And then when it gets to the Simpson Desert part, they can still get through just as well as I can because their skills are so much higher than mine. So that is another scenario. If you had to choose one motorcycle as your sole means of transport, which would you choose? This is my only motorcycle at the moment, but usually I have two. So if I was only to have one, it would be the 300 Rally, mate. Basically this bike, but with a bigger tank, a fairing and a windscreen. It would keep me out of the elements more, a little more comfortable out on the open road for those road riding times, as well as having a little more presence as well. I think it's a little more visible. Drivers might have a better chance of being able to see me as well. So my second choice would be the trusty DR650. It's a little more road orientated than the 300L behind me. More grunt as well so it'd be a little more entertaining out on the open road but still very dirt capable with a whole plethora of accessories available to turn it into whatever I need. I've always had a love for the DR650 and having a tiny excuse to have one in my garage I would jump at the chance and third and last of the lot would probably be the Husqvarna 701. Fingers crossed that I got a good one and KTM were paying attention putting it together. It is a little bit concerning that they haven't addressed some of the long-standing issues that the 690 and 700 no one have but I think with all the ability that that bike is, it definitely is a good argument as to roll the dice and hope that you get a good one because most of them are and they're a very capable machine. They have a lot of power and performance. They'd be a lot of fun on the road and they're very capable off-road as well. So I think that would probably be my third option. Hi Solid, hope you're doing well. Cheers mate, I'm doing okay, thanks. I just wanted your thoughts on rim locks and heavy duty tubes on a dual sport. Well, this is always a contentious one because there's a lot of different opinions I run heavy duty tubes on all my dual sports. I've also never had a puncture. Anecdotal, maybe, but I'll take every extra precaution I can to avoid getting a puncture. Rimlocks is another one where I always put rimlocks on my bikes, but it's also because of the kind of riding I'm doing. There are gonna be plenty of people that are gonna make fun of me for putting rimlocks on a small displacement dual sport because they're going to argue that I'm never gonna have enough power to spin the tire off the rim. Now that might be true if you're you're running high pressures and you don't really do any really serious off-road riding. I do some beach riding. There's a lot of deep sand where I live. So sometimes I'm running 10 or less PSI on my tires. It doesn't take much grunt to fling a tire off a wheel in those conditions with such low pressures. And that's where rim locks really come into it because that allows me to run those super low pressures, which makes riding in deep sand so much easier. So whenever I have a dual sport, the first thing 
I do to it, literally the first thing after riding at home is calling up the tire shop, taking it in, getting off-road tires and rim locks is what I did with my WR250R, my DRZ400 and the CRF300Ls. Can you do another video like that with community's collective knowledge about choosing adventure riding gear, pants, jackets, etc.? I'm not gonna tell you the exact gear to go and get because that's not really my style because there's so many variables like your geographical location, weather, your ability off-road, what type of riding you're doing, as well as your fitness levels and what you find comfortable and uncomfortable as an individual. Get the safest gear you can afford. If that means going to Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, Gumtree, wherever it is to get the bargain, go for it. Safety is what it's all about when you're getting gear. Often I see new riders in particular will shy away from the safest gear because it feels more cumbersome. It's not a natural feeling for them to have big chunky MX boots, body armor, a neck brace, all this extracurricular stuff that they're not used to. My goal is always to have the safest gear I can afford because you need to prepare for the crash, not for the ride. The other thing I'd like to point out is particularly with more the adventure riders and if you're doing a lot of dirt riding, the armor that is in your jackets is pretty decent. But the problem with that armor is it can move around as opposed to dual sport stuff where you've got body armor strapped to you, you've got knee guards strapped to you. So none of that stuff moves when you fall. So it's exactly where you need it to be. Now I've seen this happen with guys with adventure jackets and adventure pants where they've crashed, they've fallen on their knees or their elbows or their shoulders. And because of the way they've moved, the piece of armor has actually shifted and is not where it needs to be. And it's caused serious injury or it's been a very painful experience. So if you're doing a lot of off-road riding I would encourage you to look at body armor, knee guards, all the stuff you wear as an underlayer as an enduro rider, rather than getting just the fancy adventure gear and relying on the armor in the jackets and the pants. That stuff is good if you're doing adventure touring and comfort really is your focus. But if you're in the dirt a lot, just go straight to the safest gear you can. Also, you gotta think about the type of riding you're doing because that will dictate what you prioritize as the safest stuff for you. For me, I'm in the dirt most, so I'm wanting impact protection as my highest priority because I'm hitting the dirt a lot because I'm average off-road at best. Whereas if you're doing a lot of road riding, you might wanna focus on abrasion resistance. Tarmac is basically a giant cheese grater for human beings. So abrasion resistance is something that as a touring rider, you might wanna focus on more. I'd love to know if there's a way to fit them properly. I bought a pair of pricey big brand boots sized up generously from my all day comfortable touring boots. Added cushiony socks, wore them for a while in the shop, all good. And then by halfway through the first day of the first trip, my feet were in so much pain, it ruined the whole trip. It's not as if you can return these things after a day in the dirt. So how do you not end up with a closet full of used ones going cheap? boots. The sad fact is, mate, that MX boots just aren't made for comfort. They're made for safety. So comfort is a secondary concern for them. And that's probably why it's a shock going from a boot like the Touring boot, where comfort is the primary objective. But there are a few things that can make the boot more comfortable for you before you go out on your ride. The first thing I would do is wear it around the house as much as possible. Just wearing it in the shop for a few minutes is not enough to wear those boots in. They're extremely rigid, focused on protecting you as much as possible. So wearing them around the house, will help break them in and make them more flexible when you get to a ride. Now, I've never found MX boots uncomfortable, but that's because I spend most of my time in the dirt. I'm very familiar riding in them. But if you're coming into riding and you put MX boots on for the first time, it can be a very big shock. But I promise you, if you push through it, you soon get used to it. The other thing that I might point out that is the MX boots really aren't great for walking. So if you're using these, say, as adventure boots, you're mostly doing adventure touring and you've got MX boots in and then you do a lot of walking down to the cafe, through the shops, or wherever it is to see the sights. They really aren't built for that and they can be quite uncomfortable. So in that scenario, you might maybe look at an adventure boot. And the other problem is, is sometimes you really do just have to flip a coin, take a gamble and get the boot and see how it goes. I've had to do that a few times and luckily for me, it's turned out okay, but I can understand your frustration. So hopefully you sort your problem out, mate, and cheers for the comment. Question that may sound stupid, but has always bugged me. Don't worry about it being a stupid question, mate. Everyone has them and the only people that don't are the ones that are too scared to ask in the first place. If a person has not ridden before, how do you get a motorcycle out of the dealership without looking like a complete fool? P.S. I have a motorcycle license gained many years ago when I rode a scooter with an automatic gearbox. I just got a friend with a license to pick up my bike for me and I followed him in my car. Very demoralizing and frustrating seeing someone ride your pride and joy home, but it is a way of getting the bike home before you can learn on it. The other way is to do some lessons in the lead up and 
and that way you can organize one of your lessons to turn up at the dealership and meet you there when you pick up your bike and you can do a lesson all the way home. The other one is the old ute or trailer or you call them in America you call utes trucks for some reason so you can put it on the back of your ute or on a trailer to get it home. How important is good suspension when the rider is a complete newbie or is it more dependent on the rider's weight? When you're first starting out and you're a regular sized person so you're not overly huge i think suspension really doesn't matter much at all because you're just starting out you're not going to be able to tell good from bad suspension it's far better to just get out there put your money into safety equipment and tires to get off road and enjoy yourself rather than wasting needless money before you know what type of riding you really want to do and what kind of suspension you actually want because it needs to be tailored to the rider's needs the next question is from antonio and he's saying i would like to know the nuances between riding techniques for the road and those for the dirt trail. What habits should a street rider need to change when riding off road? This is a really good one, mate. There is a whole pile of information out on YouTube on how to ride off road and all the skills that are required. But here's the things off the top of my head that I'm gonna keep very basic that are going to be very different from riding on the road. So the first thing that I would point out is how much you use your brakes. Now on road, it's generally you use your front brakes the most, but off road, that's not generally what happens. You're probably going to be using your back brake more than your front brake because using your front brake too much if you grab a fistful off-road you're going to brake traction really quick and that is the fastest way to you landing yourself in the dirt and your bike sliding off into the sunset so you'll be finding yourself using the back brake a whole lot more in the dirt and your front brake a whole lot less the next major difference is traction maintaining traction is probably the most important thing as a rider you can do off-road don't worry about maintaining traction all the time off-road it's not as important as on road your back end can be sliding around all over the place off road and most of the time that means we've just got a big grin on our face rather than it being a bad thing the other major difference that you will notice is on the road you want to be moving your body with the bike when you're cornering so leaning with the bike to help get through the corner and carry me through in the dirt it's a complete opposite you want the bike lent over but you yourself want to be quite upright it allows you to carry the weight towards the outside corner and just allows you to maintain stability and get the bike turned as quickly and sharply as possible so it's quite counterintuitive to what you would find for road riding the other thing that is different from road to dirt riding is on the road you're rarely standing on the pegs your butt is in the seat 99.9% .9 of the time unless you're having a stretch off road if you know what you're doing your bum's going to be out of the seat 90% of the time so that's another major difference expect to stand up most of the time when you're riding off road it allows you better control. It allows you to counterbalance the bike in corners. It allows you to weight the pegs a whole lot better as well, which helps you turn direction on the motorcycle off-road, which is another thing that is different to riding on the road. Very rarely on road would you use the pegs to turn your motorcycle. But off-road, if you're wanting to make gradual changes in direction, weighting the pegs is generally the easiest way of doing that. You just take your weight off one peg and put more weight on the other peg and your bike will naturally glide towards that direction. The other thing I would point out is that power isn't quite as important as it is on the roads. Because of the super grippy tires, you really can put a lot of power to the ground. Now, when you're off-road, there's a limit to how much of that power you really can access and put in before you break traction and you can't use it. So that's something I wouldn't worry about getting a bazillion horsepower bike for off-road, especially when you're starting out. Just get something that's gonna get you through and it's gonna be easy to pick up. That's far more important than horsepower horsepower in the triple digits when you're doing dirt riding. And the last thing that I would put in here is just how much fun you can have. Now, I've been riding on the road 15 years now, and I absolutely love riding on the road, but I'm not going to lie to you, getting off road is just so much more satisfying and so much more fun to me because it's not just riding the motorcycle and the visceral experience of going fast like on the road, it's also the physical nature of it. You're now doing something that's taxing your body and you're really getting into it. You're also seeing places that a lot of people are probably never gonna see because you can only get motorcycles in there. There's also the camaraderie because you're gonna have to overcome difficulties that you're just not going to experience going down to the cafe or maybe doing an adventure tour from motel to motel. Riding off-road just adds in this risk factor and causes so many problems and causes people to come together. And those are some of the most satisfying moments in life is when people come together collectively or as an individual to overcome obstacles that not only creates fantastic memories, but it creates 
creates fantastic character. The amount of satisfaction you get from off-road riding, I believe is more than what you can get on the road. So get out there, mate, because it's so much fun.